Good morning, everyone. Didn't expect that, thank you. Good <laughs> morning. So, why technology will never replace personal meeting? When I came this morning and I looked at level six, there was actually a lot going on. And as you will see in a couple of minutes up there, there are 720 exhibitors, more than 6,000 delegates from all over the world. And actually, they represent 64 different countries. So, why do we bother to actually fill 11,000 square meters every year for ITB Asia or in Berlin for ITB Berlin? And um, as the lights will come up, you will actually see how big 11,000 square meters are. And you can anticipate how long it takes and um, how hard it is to actually fill those. So here is SunTech level six three days ago, literally three days ago. Nothing was there. It was empty. It was clean. Um, at the end, you will see what it looks like now. And I can tell you it has changed, luckily. So if we talk about technology and how technology influenced us over the last years, I, I bet a lot of you can share uh, many experience. Um, but before we talk about communication and technology, I think it's, it's worth to actually look at the world as we know it. And um, I know that this map is not the map that shows Asia in the middle in the center, and I apologize for that, but for the next slide, it makes more sense to have Europe and Africa in the middle. So this is the world as we know it, right? This is the world, um, how we see it. It's all structured, it's all in place, everything is where it belongs to. So we do have the feeling that we know what's going on, right? The world changes, though. The world changes the minute you leave your country. And personally, I've just experienced that it as, as I was posted nine months ago to Singapore. And I do not only learn a lot from Singapore, but now being in Singapore, I actually learn a lot about my home country, which is Germany, for the better or for the worse. So why does the world change depending on where we are? Look at this map. It's a world map. It's the same map I just showed you. It's just a little bit different. This is a map that Elisa Miller from Public Radio International actually drew. And it, it actually shows the balance of news, international news, in the United States. So what this means is it blows up the country that take the most part of the news in America. And no surprise, America makes up 79% of the news on American TV then it's pretty easy to figure out what this green part is, right? Iraq. Pretty easy. And I'm not trying to say here that American media is balanced. I am sure, I am certain that the same is the case in Germany, in Singapore, everywhere in the world, right? Which, which is pretty obvious. But if you take out the American news on American television, the map actually looks like this. Iraq got bigger, America disappeared, and what's surprising is that the news on American television of India, Russia, and China only make up 1% of the news in the United States of America. And again, this probably happens in every country. It just gives you an idea why it is so important to come all the way to Singapore, to America, to actually know what's going on there, because you'll be biased if you only depend on the, on the media or on the sources of information in your own country. And that's one of the reasons why, why traveling is so important and why travel gives you a great learning experience. So obviously you could argue, well, Nino, you know, you know, we have internet. I'm independent. I can choose what I read, and I can, in my, if I'm in the United States, I just go to any other website outside the United States that offers me information, which is certainly true. But if we look at one of the big inventions, Wikipedia, this actually is the map where the Wikipedia articles originate from, 
or whether being edited. So imagine you live in South Africa, for example. Imagine you live in, in Singapore, Malaysia, and you read something on Wikipedia about your own country. You can be pretty sure that it's under some European or American influence. And again, that's why it's so important to travel to these destinations and get your own picture. All right, so this is why, why we travel, and I, and I know you are aware of that. So let's have a look at, at technology and how this actually changed over the last couple of years. It changes a lot, I can tell you. So pretty easy to understand, I believe. This axis shows the information and communication that increases over time. And the other one shows the availability of information, of information sources. So how did we communicate decades ago? How did we get our information? Well, I can tell you it was certainly very, very slow, right? We had newspapers. But there was a big time lag between the time that something occurred that a journalist got to know about it, that he wrote about it, that it got printed, that it got delivered, and I would probably fall off the stage, and eventually you got to read it, right? So times have changed. We got the radio. It was a little bit faster. We had real-time information available. Someone said something, we could hear it immediately. No surprise that a couple of years later, it got even better and faster with TV. We do not only have the volume and the sound now, we also have the vision, and that certainly made a big impact on all of us to see pictures. But over time, we didn't want to wait for the news actually to, to be broadcasted at uh, 6 p.m., 8 p.m., whatsoever. We wanted to become independent, and that's where the internet came in. It got faster. And we decided when we get the information and where we get it from. So it, literally change the way we consume information and where we get it from. Now, there's one more left, and it's no surprise that now the internet seems to be not only slow, but to, to limit us to the place where our computer is, right? So that's why we all have mobile phones, and this is the fastest way up to date. It's real-time communication whether it's Twitter, Facebook, status updates, or whatsoever, it's fast. It happens, it's online. 